mind your own business. That prince has got your hero. I wish him joy of her. Well, did you think that the prince would have served you thus? I pray you leave him. Alas, poor her foul. That my lady Beatrice should know me and not know me. The prince's fool. Ha! I am not so reputed. It is the base, the bitter disposition of Beatrice that puts the world into her person and so gives me up. Oh, I'll be revenged as I may. Now, Signor, where's the Count? Troth, my lord, I find him here as melancholy as a lodge in a warren. I told him, and I think I told him true, that your grace had got the goodwill of this young lady. The lady Beatrice hath a quarrel to you. The gentleman that danced with her told her she is much wronged by you. Oh, she misused me past the endurance of a block. She told me, not thinking I had been myself, that I was the prince's jester. That I was duller than a great fool. Huddling jest upon jest with such <laughs> impossible conveyance upon me that I stood like a man at a mark with a whole army shooting at me. She speaks poniards. And every word stabs. If her breath were as terrible as her terminations, there were no living near her. She would infect to the North Star. So indeed all disquiet, horror, and perturbation follows her. Mm. Look, here she comes. <laughs> will your grace command me any service to the world's end? I will go on the slightest errand now to the Antipodes that you can devise to send me on. I will fetch you a hair of the great Cham's beard. <laughs> Do you any embassage to the pygmies rather than hold three words conference with this harpy? You have no employment for me? None but to desire your good company. Oh, God, sir, here's a dish I love not. I cannot endure my lady tongue. Ah! Come, lady, come. You have lost the heart of Signor Benedict. Indeed, my lord. He lent it me a while, and I gave him use for it. A double heart for his single one. Marry, once before, he won it of me with false dice. Therefore, your grace may well say, I have lost it. You have put him down, lady, you have put him down. So I would not he should do me, my lord, lest I should prove the mother of fools. <laughs> I have brought Count Claudio, whom you sent me to seek. Why, how now, Count? Wherefore art thou sad? Not sad, my lord. How then, sick? Neither, my lord. The Count is neither sad nor sick. Nor merry, nor well, but civil, Count. Civil as an orange, and something of that jealous complexion. If faith, lady, I think you're blazing to be true, though I'll be sworn if he be so, his conceit is false. Here, Claudio, I have wooed in thy name, and fair hero is one. I have broke with her father, and his good will obtained. Name the day of marriage, and God give thee joy. Count, take of me, my daughter, and with her my fortune. His grace hath made the match, and all grace say amen to it. Speak, Count. Tis your cue. Silence is the perfectest herald of joy. I were but little happy if I could say how much. Lady, as you are mine, I am yours. Speak, cousin. Or if you cannot, stop his mouth with a kiss and let not him speak neither. Lady, you have a merry heart. Yea, my lord, I thank it. Poor fool. He keeps on the windy side of care. My cousin tells him in his ear that he is in her heart 
And so she doth, cousin.